Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about my eczema journey. So I recently did a video on my acne journey, um, which is, you know, it's a lot worse than my eczema journey. Um, but I also wanted to talk about eczema because eczema does have inflammatory um, origins at this point. Um, in my treatment, I do know that it's definitely inflammatory. It's definitely related to my chronic illness. And so I figured it would be a good uh, video to make, especially for anybody out there that's also suffering with eczema. So I'm going to show you guys a picture. I don't, this picture is not really the best picture. It's the only picture that I have um, of my eczema prior to um, starting my IVIG treatment. Um, it's like I said, it's not the best picture, but it is the picture that I have. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get it there. You can see it's like on my shins down there, that sort of like reddish area. I know that it's the lighting is not very good. Um, so it kind of looked like burns almost if you, I guess like if I could compare it to anything, it looked sort of like burns. Um, and it was like all on my shins. It's, you know, it itches, it cracks, sometimes it bleeds. Um, I was not using anything. I did have like topical ointments. Typically they're topical steroids. Um, and the steroids have side effects. They kind of thin out your skin, so it makes you more prone to getting cuts anyways. Um, and then you can only use it for a certain amount of time. Then you have to stop. And if I would stop, then the eczema would come back. And I've struggled with eczema since I was a child. Um, and now, kind of looking back, I know that a lot of it was probably gut issues, probably um, candida-related. Um, but at this point, because I've been on a very restricted diet for many years... I knew that it had to just be inflammatory. Um, and so I did notice, so I've been on IVIG twice. I've done two stints. The first stint was from 2013 to 2014. And I immediately noticed, I think within a few months, the eczema clears, uh, cleared up. And so I knew that, um, among other things that had improved, I knew that the eczema was one of them and it was definitely inflammatory in nature because um, immune globulin is also an anti-inflammatory. It does other things, but it is um, a strong anti-inflammatory. So I lost my insurance in 2014 and had to stop my IVIG. It was almost four years before I would get back. Actually, it was four years before I would get back on IVIG. And during that time, the eczema came back. So I developed the eczema on my shins. It, it came back on my shins because I had it on my shins before. And it also um, uh, came on my hands. And so when I was younger, I had ex I've had eczema in lots of different places. I've had eczema in the creases of my arms. Um, and I, when I was younger, I saw that it was related to um, the laundry detergent we had a very old washer and I don't think it was rinsing the close the clothes out very well. Um, so I noticed that like once we got a new washer, the eczema improved, but also I switched to a detergent that was like a free and clear detergent with no um, dyes and, you know, a little bit gentler. And then I eventually, um, eventually switched to something called Ecos. I believe it's called Ecos free and clear detergent. So detergent that does not have um, it's like more natural or more on the natural side, but also does not have um, dyes or, you know, uh, fragrances. I have to be completely fragrance free with everything, body lotions, anything that goes on my skin. Um, and that helped with the eczema in the creases of my arms. Um, but then over time, the eczema evolved. I started getting eczema in between my fingers. It kind of looked bumpy, almost like a rash. Um, and I don't know if, if eczema and contact dermatitis are the same thing, um, but it always seemed to get worse if I had contact with like, um, like dish soap, like Dawn dish soap or any kind of harsh soaps, uh, chemicals. I have to use gloves, um, when I wash dishes or if I, you know, I used to clean toilets with like, um, 
you know, like Ajax, Comet, those kinds of things. I had to really make sure that they didn't make contact with my hands. Um, I don't clean house much anymore, um, but if I do, I try to stay away from those chemicals. Um, my my parents are the ones that clean the house now, um, but if I ever do clean anything, I stay away from harsh chemicals just because I also don't like to breathe them. So I've had eczema everywhere. I've had it on my finger, my fingertips. Like actually, you could probably see here because it this one kind of got a little bit bad recently. Um, I don't know if it's gonna focus on my finger. No, it's gonna stay probably focused on my face. Um, I don't have like normal fingerprints anymore and I and this I've had this issue for such a long time that um, my fingerprints have always been weird my entire life so that it almost looks like these lines almost like cuts or cracks so I don't know if my fingers are just like permanently scarred um, but I do have those lines those like almost like they look like creases um, so I've had eczema in lots of different parts um, I have also had eczema or contact dermatitis outbreaks in uh, more intimate areas and let me tell you that is that is a whole different um, situation um, and a lot of it is because of medications that I have had to use um, that have caused those contact dermatitis situations in areas that you wouldn't imagine you could get uh, dermatitis. So the IVIG helps um, so I started IVIG again at the end of 2018 and it did take a while. It takes a few months, but I always notice that my eczema is the first thing to, um, to calm down and it goes away on its own. So I don't have to put any, um, steroids or any, you know, I just put my regular lotion and little by little the eczema starts to go away by itself. And so now, you know, my legs are eczema free um, but I started to develop eczema on the palm of my hand, uh, specifically my right hand. So I, I think I had it on both palms this last time. Um, I did not have it on the palms of my hands the previous time in 2013, but for whatever reason, I developed it on the palms of my hand. I probably because my condition worsened. So I was worse this time around than back in 2013 when I did my IVIG. So I probably had more... Um, gut issues. Actually, I did have more gut issues um, and worse inflammation because I had, you know, uh, my your condition worsens if you're not on the medication you need to be on. So my shins started to clear up. I think one of my hands cleared up and one of them improved, but I still had a patch of eczema. I can't even remember where it was anymore, but I still had a patch of eczema on the palm of my hand. And you know, I, it had been already, I think a year, you know, I figured, listen, I, I'm happy that the eczema cleared up on my shins and I have a little bit on my palm. Oh, well, you know, that's just, that's just the way that it's going to be. And so I just kind of dealt with it. I, I don't wash my hands very much, or I, I didn't wash my hands very much for that reason, because my fingertips and the palm of my hand um, tend to be, you know, very sensitive, even just using, I use very gentle soap. I use glycerin, plain glycerin soap um, for my hands and for my face and my body. Um, no scent, uh, no other ingredients like aloe or anything, just plain glycerin soap. Um, but even when you wash your hands a lot, it dries your hands out and it can make you prone to just, you know, sensitivity. It makes me prone to cuts. I actually have a cut here and I had another cut here just because it thins out the skin. Um, so I was like, okay, well, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I still have a little patch of eczema. I'll let it be. Um, so yeah, I just kind of dealt with it. And then, um, one day I was ordering my supplements. Um, there are two supplements that I have. I take a lot of supplements, but there are two supplements that I notice help a lot, especially with gut issues. And one of them is L-glutamine and the other one is MSM, which is methyl sulfur something. It's like a sulfur based, um, supplement. And I was ordering the supplement. Um, I usually order them through Amazon and they come in a capsule form. I take about, I take 4,000 milligrams of MSM per day 
which is two capsules. Each one is 2,000. And then I think I take also 4,000 of L-glutamine. And I notice if I stop those, my gut issues tend to get worse. Um, that's why I'm very, very religious with those supplements because stomach and gut issues are, you know, my kryptonite. Um, Amazon ran out though. Amazon ran out of the MSM uh, capsules. And, you know, during the pandemic, Amazon has been kind of up and down with their stock. So um, just suddenly I could not find my MSM and I really, really needed it. So I was panicking. I was able to get, I think, like 1,000 milligram or 500. No, I was able to get the 500 milligram tablets. So that means that I have to take four of them a day. And I, I hate swallowing pills. So I bought that little bottle, but I started searching the Internet for... Um, for my regular, you know, 2000 milligram MSM pills. I was only, I was actually able to find 1500 milligram tablets and I'm t they're these big horse pills um, and they're tablets. So they're not the gel capsules. They're these big tablets. They look almost like, like penicillin um, and they're huge, but I was desperate um, because I really needed, that's one supplement that I can't go without um, and so I was like, I really need to get it. So I bought it, I think, off of another like health food website. I was like, I don't care what I have to pay for it. Um, the dosage is higher, so I may just have to take one capsule or one tablet. Um, so I bought them and I got them. Um, and like I said, they're these huge horse pills. They're hard tablets. They're each 1,500 milligrams. Um, and I considered taking one, but... I was like, you know what, I, I'm better off taking the two and doing 3,000 milligrams, which is more than my dose, because if I do too little, I will feel it in my stomach and in my gut. So I was like, you know what, let's see what happens if I take the two tablets. Um, eventually, the other ones will come back in stock and I will switch back to those. Well, lo and behold, I started taking 3,000 milligrams of MSM um, every day and the patch on my hand cleared up. And so I was just like, wow, I did not know that I possibly needed more MSM. It also helped with some stomach issues, um, some sort of refluxy uh, stomach irritation that I was having due to the IVIG, because I think at the time I was still getting it um, infused intravenously. And for whatever reason, it was bothering my stomach, which it had not bothered my stomach the first time around in 2013. So it was something that I stumbled upon by accident that I actually needed a higher dose of MSM and that actually I killed two birds with one stone and, you know, one very, very big bird, which was my stomach. Um, like I said, my stomach is one of those things that it's my kryptonite. If I have stomach issues, I am very, very upset, very bothered and stressed out. Um, but it was really nice that my hand cleared up as well. Recently, though, and you may know this from my other videos, I had to stop my IVIG to do another treatment. So I had to stop two weeks before the treatment, the week of the treatment, and two weeks after the treatment. So that was a whole month and a half um, that I had to stop my IVIG. And so I knew that I was going to start having some issues, especially prior to my, my, this treatment that I was going to do. And sure enough, my stomach started acting up. Um, and then I noticed my, this finger, my pointer finger, um, started getting very red. The skin felt like very thin and keep in mind right now, we're also still washing our hands a lot because of COVID. Um, and I was actually, I'm so surprised at how well my hands have held up throughout this whole pandemic. And I, I, you know, MSM was my saving grace during this pandemic because I've been able to wash my hands quite a bit without having a lot of issues. That's the reason I wasn't, I don't like washing my hands is because I start having skin issues. Um, but I've been able to wash my hands quite a bit and um, not have too much uh, damage to the skin. But I noticed as soon as I stopped my IVIG within a couple weeks, this fingertip started getting very red, started getting kind of cracked. Um, and I know that that's, I think that's like a form of eczema. Eczema manifests differently in different parts of the body. Um, and so I started noticing it was very irritated. It was red. It was, it kind of hurts. Like even if I'm grabbing things, it would hurt. I would wash my hands and it would get like irritated. 
but there was really nothing that I could do at that point. I was just waiting to do this other treatment and then I had to wait two weeks and get back on my IVIG. So I've been back on my IVIG for three weeks. This is going to be week four. Um, and all it took was three weeks and my fingertip is looking better. I mean, literally just last week it was, um, still red and cracked and looked like it was going to kind of, um, maybe start bleeding. And within a few days this past week, it just on its own, um, has gone back to its, you know, being, in better shape. I mean, obviously my fingerprint is not very good. It's still cracked and probably scarred, but it has gone back to not being red and irritated and it doesn't feel like it's going to like cut and bleed. Um, so yeah, I, I think the IVIG plus the supplements have been, you know, really, really helpful for my skin, for my hair. Um, you know, the, those supplements are also for, they work for uh, hair, skin, and nails, um, but they also work for your gut. And I think just both things, that the reduction of inflammation and the help with the lining of the gut has helped to stop the eczema. Um, what do I use on my skin? I use plain lotion. I use Alba Botanica unscented, I think it's called very emollient body lotion. That's what I use on my body. Um, on my face, uh, I do have a skincare, a face skincare video. So go check that out. I use, I think mostly Burt's Bees on my face right now. Um, you know, on my hands, I use also the Burt's Bees unscented aloe vera lotion and it's very light. It's not a heavy moisturization. That's the other thing too. That's sort of the, um, the sort the double-edged sword when it comes to eczema on your hands is that, Doctors will recommend that you put something like Eucerin or um, like those heavy kind of Vaseline based, um, they look kind of like gel, you know, like an ointment type of thing on your hands. And then when you put it on your hands, you can't touch anything because it leaves everything greasy. You can't touch your phone, you can't touch paper, you can't touch, you know, my, you know, this thing gets like all smeared because I have stuff on my hands and so you know that's probably more of a nighttime treatment um but during the day I need something lighter that won't you know that will absorb into the skin and won't get on everything and so I found the Burt's Bees aloe I think it's called the unscented um it's for sensitive skin aloe vera lotion um it's like a bottle like this size and it has a pump and that one has actually worked really well. It's very light, so it absorbs. Um, it's not the most intense moisturization, but it's enough for me. I can apply it several times during the day. I put it on, it absorbs, and I can touch things. Um, and, you know, I would rather apply more than, um, than be getting everything greasy. And so that has worked for me. Um, for my body, it doesn't really work that well. I stick with the Alba Botanica. But for my hands, it has worked just fine. Um, and so I just apply it, you know, I wash my hands and then I apply it after my hands are dry. Um, and that's what I do. I have not used any steroids or any kind of prescription medications on my skin because they, you know, as soon as I stop using them, the eczema comes back and there are all kinds of side effects. Um, and like I said, when you have an internal issue, when you have an issue with inflammation or gut problems, if you don't fix the source of the problem, you're you're going to keep having a recurrent issue and you're going to have to keep using the topical medications no matter what. So that's my eczema journey. I hope this helps someone else because I've suffered with eczema since I was a child. I've had gut issues since I was a child. I used to do anti a lot of antibiotics as a kid. I now know that that was probably the start of all of these issues or a lot of these issues. Um, and so... You know, had I known when I was younger, I probably could have corrected these problems beforehand, um, before they got this bad. But now that I do know, I'm very diligent with my supplements. Um, I am very diligent with my IVIG infusions, and I'm always looking for other things, um, other anti-inflammatory things that I can do to help, um, you know, my skin and, you know, my digestive system. 
So thank you for joining me. Please leave any comments um, how you've helped your own eczema or your own skin issues down in the comments. Um, check out my acne video as well because it's a very similar video. Um, that one was much more harrowing, a, a lot more, uh, much scarier situation um, and much more complicated, but it's, it's along the same lines as this eczema situation. Um, so please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Take care.